Hello, good evening and welcome to the Fatback 4 Daily for this Friday night. This show, of course, is brought to you by Paddy Power, a bookies, a website and an app. If you gamble, please gamble responsibly and if you don't, that's absolutely fine. But gamble responsibly with Paddy Power, odds on Liverpool, specials on Liverpool and look, sport and everything else beyond that. You know how it works by now. On tonight's show, myself and Chris are going to have a little discussion about Fabinho, the injury, what we're going to do while he's out. We're going to have a discussion about Brighton, uh, what's what's a big game again coming up at Anfield tomorrow of course the derby during the week and look I'm sure we'll get into other bits as we go along we're also going to try pick out our special bets for Paddy Power this week that we're going to place on the Reds and hopefully win some money for charity And here we go, the Fatback 4 Daily, how are we all? Chris, uh, bad news, bad news, bad news has started with us today um, and it's the scan on Fabinho and it looks like that man will be out for between six to eight weeks. Of course, he misses the Brighton game at the weekend anyway, but it's a big loss for us, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's, he's sort of made that position, he has made that position his own really, so, but uh, you could tell in the ground, uh, as soon as he went down, it did look like um, more than a knock. Because it's just sort of a, a, a sense you get on the ground when someone's down, you can tell it's quite serious. I mean, the hope was it was only a couple of week job, you know. Um, but yeah, ankle ligaments, it's um, not 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 the most ideal start for us. But it's been a catch twenty two. He's going to miss a lot of games, but on paper, the games that Liverpool should have enough midfield depth to win without him. It luckily it's it's not coming the run when we had to play like. Chelsea, Man City, Man United, you know, it is against teams that on paper we should still be okay against. It's just not ideal. No, it's far from ideal. And look, you, you know, I know we've had Alice now for, for seven, eight weeks. You know, Matip has been out now for a couple of weeks and there's probably a, a few more weeks before he gets back as well. And, you know, th- these things happen, you know, when, like the media will tell you, like, you Man City have been unlucky with injuries, Laporte and, and stuff like that. We've had our fair share. And look, this is another one. But it, it for you, is it a massive time now for the likes of Oxley chamberlain uh, you know, Keita, even Lallana to come in and, and prove their worth to this squad? Because we're going to need those players even more so now with that injury that's been, that Fabinho's come down with. So it, it, is a massive, it is a massive chance, I suppose. And for one of those, I suppose, to, you know, I seen, I seen someone on Twitter earlier say, just grab a jersey and make it your own. It's a massive chance yeah. for him, isn't it? It is definitely uh, there is a massive there is uh, an opportunity there for you. I mean, I must have I thought Chamberlain when he came on looked lively. You know, he gave us a bit of a bit of a, bit of an extra dimension. I I still have my concerns with Chamberlain off the ball. I don't think he's I don't think he's got the intensity is quite right, and I do think he leaves us a bit too open. But I do think a lot of that's linked more to the fact that he's had an in, he's had an injury rather than he can't rather than a lack of willingness. The other option, I suppose, is always. Do we even look at a bit of a formation switch? Yeah, I've seen that mentioned today as well, yeah. Because it was around this time of the year where Shakiri played a lot. Obviously, I know he's been injured. Um, 4-2-3-1 was the in, the in vogue system we play, which allowed us to play south to the middle, Shaq on the right. But then Cater arguably plays better in a two. If you play Henson and Wijnaldum together, they look quite good in a, in a two. And it, it also gives you an option to throw an extra attacker in. I'm not sure he'll do that for Brighton. And I'm not saying he'll probably do that for Salzburg away, but you would think for some for some of these clubs who are playing like Bournemouth and Watford, that might be an option and still keeps us solid. Because I think we do ask for being able to do a lot of work uh, and I'm not sure we've got anyone who's going to quite cover the ground that he does. I was. It's interesting you say that because I was going to ask you, if he doesn't go with a formation change, okay, and he decides that he's going to stick with his 4-3-3 and he's going to obviously have to deal with the loss of Fabinho, what way does he do it? And I'm going to put it forward that straight away when I heard this news today, I just thought, Gini Wijnaldum, deepest line midfielder, steps in for Fabinho for eight weeks. You leave you leave Henderson where he is, and then you decide between Oxley chamberlain Keita, Milner and Lalana to fill that other spot. Do you think that might be the way he goes? Because I don't want to... I'm not, I'm not against formation changes per se, but with the run that's coming up, you know, you put forward the argument there that there might be a, a tweak, but is there many of them teams that you're looking to play two sitting midfielders? I know it gets an extra 
body <coughs> an attacker on the pitch, but it's still making you go with two sitting midfielders. You know the kind of way. I think it is, but I think those two sitters, although they're sitting, you're still going to tell Trent and Robertson to bomb on as they do. Mm. So you are still going to end up with a front four, a front six. I mean, you know, almost say saying to Henderson or say to Henderson when Alden, you know, just gives a bit of cover. But even if he does that, when he did play four two three one, only one of them ever sat. The other one was getting a little bit of license to rule. I've got a feeling for Brighton, and I know it's going to make Twitter uh, explode when it gets announced. I think it's going to be Lallana again because he did he did the job against Villa, did it all right, and you would think at home against Brighton we should have the ball a bit more. Yeah, I would say I, I wouldn't expect him to start Lallana in that role against Everton. I think against Everton, I think you go with one album. Yeah, I, I suppose like it, it's nice to to talk about this, you know, in. In the face of a player getting getting an injury that looks like six to eight weeks, so they, they are saying he will be out till the new year. So you're probably looking end of January, at, you know, before we before we see him. It is nice to actually have those options there. And I know people will say, "No, Lalana, this." And I'm not a fan of Lalana. I people know that, you know. The the thought of him in the six worries me massively. Good on the ball, you know, distributes it okay, but I just think. You'd, you'd be looking at even if the likes of Brighton will come and say, "Right, we're going to stick a big man up front, and we're just going to land someone on Lalana as well, and the rest of the lads will sit back, but we're just going to land someone on him and literally pop balls at a fella that's that's in Lalana's area and try to run off him all day." But we have the options there, and I, I, I'll go back to it again. You know, I've seen a lot of people say this is the time for Kate that you need. He needs to step up. He's not into it yet. He probably hasn't there, the but. In in a mad way, has this kind of worked out for Keita, where it looks like there may be a spot? You know, because we always talk about Fabinho and Alden Henderson, and the big game we go into, that's our three. That can't be our mm-hmm. three now for the next, you know, eight, ten games, probably probably a little bit more than that. Has it worked out for Keita where it's focused his mind that there, there is an actual spot there? It's not like I'm playing on the fringes and these lads are going to mm-hmm. step in for the big ones. Could it be a case of, and, and Oxley Chamberlain, I suppose, as well, like I read on Twitter today, is it definitely a case of grab that short and don't let it go? I think so, yeah. And we've seen with Klopp, um, if you take your opportunity, it doesn't care who you keep it out, he'll keep you in. Yeah. And, you know, and he, keep, he keeps them hungry. <coughs> I think the other, the, other, the other questions we've got to look at in, in the squad, I mean, the nice problems to have, I suppose, is there's still probably two players that worry me slightly more with their injury records. One is Salah, mm-hmm. who, he wasn't great against Napoli, but I'm trying to work out, is that because he's still carrying an ankle injury? Or, as we've seen about Salah, he has a bit of the Michael Owen about him, is that if he doesn't play for two or three weeks, which he hasn't played for three weeks, he looks really off the boil for eight, and then it takes him a game to really kick himself into gear. Mm-hmm. So I'm hoping it's more the latter. And the other, the other concern I have is Lovren, not in terms of his ability, mm-hmm. it's in terms of his availability. He's not renowned for doing three games a week. And we're gonna have, he's definitely got to play against Brighton. Mm-hmm. He's definitely got to play against Everton. Mm-hmm. But then if we want to play it, and we, he'll have to play against Salzburg. So oh, he's at some point, Lovren, Lovren's got to get a rest because he's not known for three games a week. He picks up niggles. It's just it's, he's one of those players. They just do. And the, the Matic news, how can I put it? It's all. It's very. Oh, he'll be back soon. He'll mm. be back soon. This 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 back soon's been a month now. Mm. I I don't. So, I, I'd be surprised if you see in Matic before we go away to the Club World Cup. That's going to be honest with you, because mm. that's now three weeks away. Roughly, give or take, yeah, three weeks away, a little under three weeks away, probably. I mean, call it four weeks. So if he's out for another two weeks with injury, two and a half weeks, three weeks, he's not going to be thrown straight back in. So I don't think you will see that. It's a fair point on Lovren, and the one thing that worried me about Lovren was I heard that Klopp had announced that there was a little bit of illness in the squad, and that was down. That was the reason Kato wasn't in the squad on Wednesday. So and usually when an illness arrives in the squad, Lovren's one of those that goes down with it. And you know you're. He never, you're then again, he never gets him when he's when he's not being when he's being picked though. He, he seems to be quite resilient to it. Yeah. No. Look, it's 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 a fair enough assessment, I suppose. And you know there was which a stack step- there was a stack going around that I don't think he's played six or seven consecutive games for Liverpool in his career, which is mm. which is mind boggling. Like I I always think to myself I have to go and check that because that sounds off the I wall. Think- Although I did level a lot of criticism think- last season at him when he went down against Wolves with a twinge and disappeared for I don't know how long. Yeah, I mean, which then means if you do have to give him a get if you do need to give him a rest, 
you're back to the Joe Gomez conundrum, who I like Joe Gomez. Mm. I think he's got the highest ceiling of the three centre-backs with Van Dijk. Mm-hmm. But the Paul, he's just woefully out of form. Uh, I saw a lot. On Wednesday done him no favours. No, I know he doesn't do no favours playing him at right back, and I, and I get that to a point. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I do think the right back with Joe Gomez is a little over-egged. He plays fine as a right back. The problem is, we don't play as a norm. Our, our right backs train Alexander Arnold, who's, who's basically Kevin De Bruyne. Mm. But if if he played that. If he played that way at right back for Man United or for Tottenham, you'd all go, "That's a solid. That's a solid performance. Well, you see, That's the, what you want." We, but he's not. He's not that type of player. We spoke. We spoke about this on on the show after me, myself and Damo spoke about this after this game on Wednesday, right? And I, uh, my point was Joe Gomez as a right back, okay? And and there was a there was a girl on Twitter asked us to talk about Joe Gomez, and I pointed her in the direction of the show the other night. But look, we've 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 landed here, so we go with it again. Joe Gomez on Wednesday night played as a right back for Liverpool, and any other team he would play in, the majority of teams, if you dropped him into a t- that team, asked him to play right back in that style, he would absolutely be fine. The problem is, and it, and it, and it actually connects to what your point about Salah, the problem is, Joe Gomez isn't the right back that Liverpool need. Okay? Juan Basaka at United, who's lauded for tackles and interceptions and all sorts of stuff, would not walk at Liverpool because he doesn't have the forward going forward expertise that we require. Okay? With the Salah thing, you're saying he wasn't great and is it this or is it a Michael Own sort of situation? What I felt with Salah the other night was when he had Gomez over there with him, he was too wide for a start. He was receiving mm-hmm. the ball. It was the, the, the play was too slow. And when he was getting her off Gomez, there was no movement around him then. You know, like you would see from a Trent Alexander-Arnold. All right? And it affected Salah. I noticed he grew into the game more when they moved Henderson over that way and when they brought Chamberlain on because it allowed Salah to roam into positions on the inside right channels and affect the game more. So I think Gomez's overall performance as a right back, I had no problem with. But having said that, it's not what we need. You know, the kind of way... It, you, my argument would have been put Milner or Henderson there from the start and you get a little bit more forward impetus. What you're looking yeah. for when Trent isn't I think there. So. I think so. Well, maybe the last two games Milner's played fullback, it hasn't, it hasn't, been, <laughs> hasn't been good by his standards. Mm-hmm. So possibly, I assume that's why you put him in midfield just to give him a run out in his more natural position. Mm-hmm. Maybe, but this maybe is a Klopp thing a little bit, not to criticise the man too much, but we had this situation with Man United where we lost Salah because he was injured, so be it. And I don't think our midfield three of Genie, Fabinho, Henderson works as well without the front three because they all complement each other. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's where we need to put a, a bit more of a flair type midfielder. Mm-hmm. So maybe if you are going to throw in a Joe Gomez at right back because you need to give Trent a rest, which is perfectly fine, maybe then you go, you look at the midfield and go, well, if we're resting our most attacking fullback who puts all the cross in, then maybe that is the game where you go to a cater, uh, a chamber, go, you get on and you you get forward. Completely so maybe agree. that's where we go. F- maybe that's where we go forward. Yeah, because uh, another person on the show today made a great point. Um, I think it might have been Carl, and he said, if you're if you're taking out Trent and his you know his ability to affect the game in an attacking sense, you need to replace it somewhere else in the team. And <clears throat> I think that's a very valid valid point. You know, Joe Gomez, he may need. He may need a lot of them to go down and have, you know, an illness or, you know, feels his groin a slight bit and Gomez gets in there. Now, I'm not saying Gomez will come in and be the Gomez that he was last season, but I think that's the only way you get Gomez back into form. It's not playing him at right back. It's not asking him to try to do what Trent does because he looks hesitant to go forward. And when he does venture forward, he looks a bit caught out going the other way, you know. And it, our midfield suffered because of it. You know they're looking for the right back to go past them so they can function as this function in midfield. So it just it, it was not the perfect storm, but it was one of those you know night where it just mm. didn't happen for us for, for certain reasons. You know, but I did hear, I did hear a shout on another show, which is uh, it's never cropped in my mind was why didn't you stick Chamberlain at right back? Which I mean, you think Chamberlain's not a right back, but then you sort of thinking the way our right back plays, he plays as a right winger, so actually. I might suit Chamberlain coming from deep and just saying just just crack on get because. He, he naturally goes wide anyway. I know he likes playing in the middle. I think that's a be- I think wide. that's a bigger argument. I think that's a better argument than playing Chamberlain in the front three. Yeah, I genuinely I believe that. 
I think he's more effective deeper. I think, he, which is strange for a man who started out as a winger. Deeper with, the, with the game in front of him. But he just seems to have developed into a player that he's much better coming from deep. Mm. You know, it's it's probably the way the game's going a little bit, but, yeah. you know. It's bursts of speed, it's bursts of energy, it's it's directness, you know, and it's yeah. seeing the game in front of him. And I think that's where Chamberlain has developed into. You go back and... The big- you go back. I, I spoke on on the club last Monday about you know Chamberlain b- b- being or he can he can play that midfield because he he was a wing back at Arsenal, and I I'll always say it, he was a wing back at Arsenal because Wenger was losing his mind. Having said that, Arsenal didn't play like we play, you know. So no. if, if I was to choose one place for Chamberlain, it's definitely in the midfield three. But if I was to choose between right back and right and as an you know a right sided forward, I would go right back all day. But look, we'll, 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 we'll have to wait and see. Fingers crossed we don't get any more injuries mm. and we're not, we're not having to make these changes and, and stuff like that. But I, I stick by, I stick by my, my mantra is Joe Gomez shouldn't play it right back for Liverpool because it's doing Joe Gomez no good. It affects the side and it's doing him no good whatsoever. And if mm. it comes down to Joe Gomez is just not playing as well as Lovren or Matip and he's not getting in the centre-half, he sits on the bench. It's That's the way it goes. You know, you... you I know people say, oh, you need to get minutes and stuff. Yeah, you probably do. But the minute should be at centre-half. He is a centre-half. And he came out at the start of the season and said he's a centre-half. So we'll have to wait and see. If he doesn't if he doesn't find his form soon, he's playing himself into that League Cup side, which is probably not what he wants to be. Mm, the only thing that'll stop that is... <laughs> Uh, Matter being out, yeah, Matter being out. Yeah, but look, the big thing I hope happens in the next four or five games is the front three start to um, spark a little bit. They don't, they, they were, they did play last night a bit like three individuals. They didn't, it wasn't really that interplay we see with them. They seem to stay very. It was so slow though. Yeah, it was so slow, but Manny stayed very left. Salah was very wide right, and mm. Firmino was coming too deep. Now I know that's part of the midfield issue, but there was very rarely any sort of inter interchange of the positions, you know, getting close to each other, where sometimes, we've seen it before with Liverpool, where it's not quite where it's gone a bit slow. So the three of them almost like get the ball and kind of do it between them. Yeah. But there they, was, there they was just a, haven't quite done that there was as a good, much as I would like. There was a good couple of moves where Mane gets it to Firmino and a nice little flick in around the corner. It happens a couple of times. Milner gets beyond them. But uh, I just think the way, the way it was set up and... The way we, ha- the way our right back situation was set up, I just think affected the team throughout the, the whole game, you know. But looking forward to Brighton, you know, it's yeah. it's another game. It's um, three o'clock on Saturday. It's it's at Anfield, you know. We we I'm still smarting a little bit that we haven't beaten Napoli because I thought it was key in in freeing us up a little bit in this absolutely berserk December. But that's that's the way things are and I'm sure I'm sure they had Klopp and his backroom staff have made plans for every eventuality. But looking at Brighton there, we have Brighton um Brighton at home, Everton at home in our next two games, okay? And looking forward to this one, we are gonna have the majority of the ball. I can see Brighton coming and looking to frustrate us and maybe getting you know, maybe getting quick lads down the sides of us to see if they can try get something off as you might see Glenn Murray come on for 20 minutes at the end to throw himself around but hopefully the game is done but just looking forward to it as a, as a, as a whole what way do you approach this one you know it's you know we know Fabinho's out we know Clay that looks like he's back in the squad Salah played during the week but he has got that issue over him with, with an ankle um, Trent comes on as a sub when they look to rest him did he, go, did he do something there again what way, what way are you I, going with this I'm going with Alisson um and the usual and the, the main back the main back four we've mm-hmm. got at the moment. Yeah. Um I definitely think Manny and Firmino start. I think if there's a, I think if Klopp's got any sort of worry or slight concern about Salah's ankle, mm-hmm. I think you I think you bench him for the derby. Mm-hmm. Because I think that's the bigger game of the two. Mm-hmm. And maybe that's one of these, maybe it's one of these mad games where you do throw a Shakiri and out, out out the blue. Mm-hmm. Something that they're not expecting. Mm-hmm. Midfield wise, I think Genie plays, I think I think Genie definitely plays. And then it's two of us, and I'm I'm internally debating which two of us. Henderson, not Henderson. I'm, I'm thinking if Fabinho hadn't got injured, he would have out anywhere. But yeah, but I'm, I'm sort of thinking at some point Henderson needs a rest because he played. You know, he's played a lot recently, and he's picked up a few niggles. You know, with England and that. Mm. But I don't because you don't want to lose him for the derby. But I think because of injuries, you're probably going to have to play him. I personally would go Chamberlain probably. Okay. Then. The only issue with playing Chamberlain is he likes to play on the right, so does Henderson. So it means making two changes, which is maybe where Cater comes in, because Cater naturally likes to play on the left. Yeah. So you go Cater, Genie Holden, and Henderson on the right. 
Yeah, it's an interesting one on Salah, you know, and, and with the derby coming up, I think if we were playing, you know, I don't know. Pickers. If the derby was a week later and it was Bournemouth yeah. we were playing midweek, yeah, I'd be less play- worried. Yeah, if it was Bournemouth Jordan, uh, Jordan, Jordan next week, you'd be kind of making a few more changes, I think. And or you'd be saying to yourself, we can do this and, you know, Bournemouth Jordan the week, we need to make a few. But with the derby, you are kind of preparing for that. Because no matter how bad I've been there, I'll always say it, it's always one of those games that, you know, it's like, it's like it's not, not that it can go either way at Anfield because it usually doesn't but there's some being touchy ones and you know the one last year that we won I thought we were poor in I thought everything played quite well but just looking at just looking at the team and, and you what you've said is quite interesting I think he will go Allison. I think he might do Trent Gomez Van Dyke Robertson um, he might do I, I, I think I he mean, might I think he might and I think it will be a clock thing to do because um I went to the, oh, you know, I took my daughter to the 5 5 against Arsenal, mm. and Lalana was atrocious. He couldn't pass the ball two yards. He had one of those games. Mm. And then he started against Villa in, in three days later. Yeah. And we're, you know, you're like, you wouldn't expect him to start against Villa because he was yeah. on form. He was yeah. really poor. Yeah. But Cop does seem to like his players that vindication. Like he did it with Lovren when he had his meltdown against Spurs, started him against Huddersfield, and he was brilliant. Yeah. Because I'm just thinking, I. I like I know he takes he takes Gomez off after fifty five minutes the other night, and it's maybe because we're one 0 down and the the game mm-hmm. is a little bit slow. He's probably looking to inject something in, and and it's probably the change he has to make because he he's had to make a, he's had to make a change early in the game. You know, with Fabinho going off, so it's limited his his ability to change the game later on. So he's probably gone with that early enough. But I, I just I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm looking at it the wrong way, but I'm just thinking he's probably told Gomez, "You've done absolutely fine. You've done nothing wrong. I just needed something different." You know. And and to validate he's, that, he's and, a, and to validate that opinion, he's probably saying to Gomez, "I'm going to start you with the weekend beside beside Virgil Van Dijk, you know." And it, and it takes that risk of Lovren getting, you know, having having an injury the weekend, and he's ready for the derby, ready to go. Mm-hmm. So I think he might go Trent Gomez Van Dijk Robertson in midfield. It's a difficult one. I think he might prefer Henderson in the deeper role than Wijnaldum, but I love Wijnaldum in there. I think he's 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 a he's, really good. Deputy for Fabinho when when that's needed. The team I'm gonna go with is Allison. I'm gonna go Trent Gomez. I'm gonna go Van Dyke, and I'm gonna go Robertson. I'm gonna go with Henderson. I'm gonna go with no, sorry. I'm gonna go Wijnaldum, Henderson, Kate, and I think Chris might be right. I think he may have a point with regards to Salah. So I'm going to go this time. With Origi, Firmino, Salah. Chris, you're back with me. I'm back. I'm back. I don't know what happened there, and I, and I, I tried my best to cover and talk a load of air, uh, just fill a load of did. gaps. But I didn't do very well. I'm gonna have to edit yeah. that out. Um, <laughs> yeah. you, did, you, you just didn't have a point, did you? Like, oh, right, okay, I did. I done. did, and then I was about to come to you, <laughs> and then you just disappeared. And I don't know. I, you must have had to put fifty pence in the meter to get going. But yeah, I've given my team. Give me your team. Uh, so I, I caught the end of your team there. So I have Allison, Trent, Gomez, Van Dijk, Robertson. I have Wijnaldum, Henderson, Keita, and I have Origi, Firmino, Salah. The only one I'm thinking is I think he might throw Shaq in over Origi. I okay. think Origi's played himself into being the perfect sub, which is probably the opposition he wants to be in. But we, we will we will we will see. I suppose uh, the rest of it, yeah, I'm, I'm sort of coming around to the Gomez Gomez idea. Mm. It, it, when you think about it, it is a very clop thing to do. To yeah. Give a give a player a bit of vindication of go on then prove everyone wrong you can do it, okay. which if it if, if it works out well that'd be great for Gomez that's exactly what he needs. Yeah, uh, obviously, uh, but we ha- the key thing the two, the two key reasons was two key reasons to beat Brighton. One is obviously City about the gate the early kick off against okay, team they should beat and they were Newcastle. Yes. Are they home the, or away? Uh, away to Newcastle. Newcastle. Yeah, I think it's the, I think that's the game they lost last year. Yeah, but they haven't got Rafa Benitez to contend with. No, they've got Steve Bruce's big head to mm, film a goal, so yeah, you never no, know. Not happening. And the and the other more important thing is uh, my boss is a Brighton fan. Okay. So so obviously, you know, I, I can I've got to have the bragging rights to work. Absolutely you do. <laughs> so prediction. What's your score prediction? Um I'm gonna go for a controversial two nil. Two nil because it'll be a, because we because we I mean, I just get a clean sheet. Okay. I'm only going 2 now because both the games last year were really tight. I think they were mm. both 1-0s last year. Yeah. And Brighton do seem to be playing a bit more expansive. They, 
I know they got battered by City, but they, mm. they kept the ball a lot of City, which not many teams do these days. Yeah. I I think Liverpool win 3 0. I'll take that. I think they win 3 0. I think I think it'd be it might be one of those games where we we just not stroll through it, but I just feel that we'll we'll manage ourselves, but we'll hit them when we need to hit them. So I'm going to go 3-0 to Liverpool. Have you any ideas on bets for the weekend? So the way we split it up is €10, Euros, €5, Euros, €5 Euros from our €20 Euro special bet. Now, we use, sometimes we just put 20 on something. Sometimes we put a 10 and two fives. Sometimes it's two tens. But we'll see what we can come up with. I have said 3-0, but a bet that's worked for us recently has been Liverpool to win and both teams to score. We've both gone for clean sheets, so we can't really endorse that this week, can we, Chris? No. Uh, Liverpool win over two and a half goals for going mm. your 3-0 mm. and Manny first goal. Okay. That, that might be a safe bet, I would suggest. Okay, so what about Manny any time? Okay. Mm-hmm. We can put over 2.5 goals and Liverpool to win and we put 10 quid on that because I think that's a very good safe bet. Sounds good to me. Okay. Uh... So the two outsider bets... Um, are usually a little bit more outside. Usually something Stephen Mack comes up on the YouTube chat and he says 4-1, 4-1, and he just shouts 4-1 until I put 5 euros on it. But is there a goal scorer out there in this game that might be a bit longer odds, I'm thinking, that we might be able to put a few quid on? Uh, why don't you put Liverpool win, Joe Gomez score? Oh, I'd have to wait to see the line-up there, wouldn't I? You, you would do, but... Uh, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll tell you what I'll do. Will do Gomez, and if he doesn't start, put Lovren instead. Right. Well, I was. T- I tell you what I was going to do. I was going to do Gomez to score if he starts, but if he doesn't mm-hmm. start and Keita starts, I was going to put Keita in to score that and sounds, Liverpool win. That sounds a fair deal. Right. So that's a five. That's five on that. So we've one more bet. So we can go off the charts here if we want. <laughs> so what about if we went with something like? Let me see. Look. So what about if we done like a a, a score prediction? Right. So. We could do say Liverpool. You could put five nil on it, and but you could add in a scorer on top of that as well to make it a bit of a double for an out really outside bit. Yeah, f- uh, five nil and do Robbo to score. Five nil and Robbo. Are we if going five nil? Do you yeah, want to go that far? On. Okay, five nil and Robbo to score. If, it, if it's the ex- if it's the extreme one, let's go for an extreme bet because imagine how much money you would okay. sell. Okay, five nil and Robbo to score. I am. Um, which would be I'll five be euros. If, if, that, yeah. if, that, if that comes out, I'll be gutted because I'll be kicking myself in that point now. <laughs> so we're going with that. We're going with five euros on Liverpool to win and either Gomez or Keita to score, depending on if either of them start. If neither of them start, I'll just randomly pick a player somewhere with a longer odds. And 10 euros on Liverpool to win, Manny to score any time and over 2.5 goals? Yeah. Okay. Because you, you said 3 0, so we'll go with 2.5. No worries, no That's, worries. That also then covers us in case you don't get the clean sheet. Okay, all right. Well, listen, um, I will edit this down. So, this big delay in the middle where Chris had to put money in his meter will not sound as bad <laughs> on the download. On the video, it will look as bad and will sound as bad as. Uh, as as a as it genuinely was, I just got thrown all together by not only what was on the screen here in front of me, but what was going on in the room while I was here as well. So um, that's what happens when you have kids and you wander into rooms while you're doing podcasts. Um, but look, Chris, thanks a million for joining us. No worries, mate. Speak to you Sunday. No worries. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we are. I should be back tomorrow after the game, so probably about five thirty p.m. for the Fatback Four Daily and the Fatback Four podcast itself is back at. 9 p.m. on Sunday. 9 p.m. for anybody that's wondering. Live only on YouTube, by the way. Plus, Footy Globe, um, as some people might know on Twitter, do t shirts and stuff like that. And they've given up, they're giving us a t shirt of your choice to give away. So we will come up with some sort of competition for that. So stay tuned for that live show on Tuesday night via YouTube only. Before I go, the last thing I want to say before I go, and it's probably the most important thing, and the most important thing that's happened um, regarding Liverpool this week is the result of the trial. Um, Duck and Field was on trial uh, with regards to Hillsborough on the 15th of April 1989 the man was acquitted and I know it's hard to how do I put this it's hard to say stuff to without, it's hard to accept it's hard to say stuff without prejudice and possible trials in the future but I will say and what, what comes out of it the most and I hear um, Margaret Asmell say, say stuff and I've heard other commentators with regards with to Liverpool saying this if 96 people are unlawfully killed and 31 years later nobody 
is being um, held responsible for that. It's, I'm going to say it, it's an absolute disgrace. Our thoughts are with the families of the 96 that died that day. Um, they continue to fight on for justice for their family members. And myself, I know Chris, everyone at the LFC, the A-Trippers, wishes them the absolute best of luck with it and offers our support, I suppose, at this very difficult time. But I know they keep fighting on and one day they will get um, what they deserve and that is justice. Over now.